Ross might be out. Taken comfortably, and that's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Cricket is a <coughs> common passion. Uh, sports, yeah. basically, I will say. Um, and uh, thankfully, uh, because of Facebook, we became friends and yeah. we came to know about each other's interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was watching your uh, some of your programs and uh, some of your write-ups on cricket, so it was interesting. Mm -hmm. So I got mm -hmm. connected and I started following you on Facebook, right? So mm -hmm. uh, then all of a sudden we thought, okay, let's do uh, some program with you. Uh, and then this coronavirus came in, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I thought in this environment, what else we can discuss, right? We cannot go yeah. and discuss about yeah. other stuff. So let's let's yeah. focus on the most important thing, which is like, uh, yeah, how, the how it is going to affect the well beings and uh, the mm. the income and the market and the yep. market capitalization and so forth. Yep. And I thought that that will be a good uh, discussion point with people like you who are like expert so rather than i myself giving the commentary on that i thought of mm -hmm. inviting mm -hmm. expert like you <laughs> sir expert me we're all <laughs> members <laughs> of the family no, and no. you know the industry so nobody is so an so expert let me, person. <laughs> uh, so let me give the introduction of venu who okay to all my audience uh, mm. uh venu is a very expert marketing uh, uh, professional in uh, sports uh, management Am I right, Benu? Uh, yeah. yeah, sports uh, technology and analytics, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So he is involved in analytics, analytics and uh, sports management, and he has worked for many companies like that. So he's he's in a better position than me to talk about what is the financial impact of coronavirus as far as uh, the sports market is concerned. So yeah. because he has a very keen eye on it, so I thought of inviting him and talk about. It. So all yours, Venu. Uh, okay. So thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, and uh, happy to be on this platform. I'm really honored to be on this show. And like I said, I've been following a lot of your Facebook, uh, your uh, YouTube uh, shows as well uh, before this one, and some very interesting insights on cricket being shared there. And obviously, that's our common passion, like we, like you mentioned, right? So yeah. So yeah, I think. Uh, First and foremost, like, you know, we're living in very unprecedented times and, you know, it's it's a really challenging situation, not just for the sports industry, but overall in general with world economy and, uh, you know, health being concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, when it comes to sports specifically, uh, I think uh, this is an industry which will definitely be hit uh, a lot because of the fact that, you know, the first and foremost thing which was cancelled was all live sport events, right? Yeah. So without that, without players, without fans, without broadcasts, nothing will you know move forward in sport, uh, mm. especially when it comes to revenue generation and running the economy and you know keeping fans engaged, keeping players you know uh, to their playing to their best ability on the field. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one major impact, and not just cricket but across sports and. Uh, uh, coincidentally, the only thing booming in sports now is esports, which is a completely different parallel economy in, in itself. And yeah. I think that's something which we so the video games and uh, virtual yeah, games. yeah, exactly, virtual games and sports and events which happen online. So I think, uh, and that's actually one industry which has seen a lot of boom in the last decade or so. And uh, I, I believe so, that that's yeah, so. Sorry, before sorry. we move forward, uh, Venu, uh, would mm -hmm. you like to give some statistic that? What kind of loss we are talking about? Because in in economical terms, in uh, you know data terms, like sure. if I'm not wrong, uh, a sports market is is roughly around six hundred and fourteen billion dollar. We are talking talking about. Uh, yep. It was projected to touch in 2022. If I'm not Correct. wrong, in Correct. 2018, the data shows that the the world economy, the the contribution of sports, mm -hmm. world economy was around four hundred. 489 billion if i'm not wrong correct so just think about the kind of employment it is generating the kind of yep. impetus it is giving to the main economy yep uh, it is huge right so absolutely 
and uh, so, i mean the, the the most important point to note there is not just the sport in itself which is generating that revenue but the parallel things which come with the sports or the you know uh, the overall package which comes with sports and yeah. that's probably with something which i'm going to share in this uh, just a small slide where which i have uh, are you able to see my screen uh, yes, you can see yes, yeah. very much okay so I, i i do a bit of consulting work with this company called fanisco uh, mm -hmm. which is into fan engagement solution that's why you see the logo there and mm -hmm. i am also covering covering a bit of fan perspective in terms of you know how will they react in this kind of an ecosystem and what companies are doing to keep fans engaged mm -hmm. so i think so this is a very very crucial element in terms of how teams are coping up and how you know tournaments mm -hmm. and all the sporting organizations are kind of coping with this economy mm -hmm. so i think before we move ahead probably what we'll look at is who all are affected you know and mm -hmm. that's something which you spoke about before mm -hmm. first and foremost it's a no brainer the athletes Athletes, uh, you know, so those are the most hard hit, uh, you yeah. know, uh, in terms hard of hit. impact. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, I actually do feel for them, to be very honest, because you know, uh, classic example, the 2020 Olympics, which was happening in Tokyo this year. Mm. Just imagine the plight of a person, of a player or an athlete who has been training for four years, you know, just yeah. to be on that, uh, you know, in that event, and you know, yeah. he's given his blood and sweat, he's trained hard, and you know, he's just. had this one vision in mind that 2020 is where i need to go and be at my best yeah. so just imagine the amount of uh, not just physical but even mental uh, you Economy. know uh, yeah uh, you know the kind of sadness that he'll go through uh, you yeah. know so that's he or she will go through basically so that's something which is of prime importance a psychological factor of how yeah. to kind of reprogram your brain again you yeah. know of, and that of, is that is very important point you are uh, talking about venu because what yeah. i think that even this will be over and we are all are hoping that it is going to be over by say may or june or july whatever yep exactly. the mental scar it is going to uh, leave yep. it, will be, it it will have a longer effect Absolutely. and it will have a deep impact and I, we do exactly. not have any tool to actually yep. figure out what yep. what is the negative Absolutely. impact so, of that mental so, Uh, yes. stuff right so that's yeah. that's the intangible element of sport right you can't right. measure that so we can only yeah. talk about the tangible which we can see and evaluate exactly so. exactly and that this cannot be measured in dollars or money or any yeah. kind of uh, you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. yeah so i think so yeah so the athletes uh, you know and that, it, it'll be interesting to see not just how they are affected now but what yeah. i feel is how they come back into the main uh, you know stage when the things get better because you know obviously you know if we are living in an age where there's a lot of sports science and a lot of uh, strength and conditioning experts and you know exercise and sports medicine experts giving their uh, views on this on this and players following a sp uh, specific routine as well but i think that's not the point here the point is uh, you know about that competitiveness in terms of being in a game scenario and you know being in an environment where they actually play the sport not just about physical fitness so i mm -hmm. think how do they get back into that mental makeup and mindset is something which is very very crucial so okay. will they be able to be at their best you know in terms of being in uh, or, you know when you say in cricket you know uh, it's not just about net practice it's also about game practice right match so, right. yeah exactly match practice so as much as you play well in the nets but you know it's what you do in the middle when it's a high pressure scenario yeah. so how will they cope up with all this thing happening and you know mm -hmm. when they come into the action say after if we take 6 months for an example from now mm -hmm. so you know so how do they build up to that that's something which is very interesting and this is something which has never happened before so yeah. yep it could be like coming off from an injury layoff you know but then it's like for everybody everybody is on a level playing ground yeah yeah so that's interesting uh, teams uh, teams in terms of uh, you know again uh, a lot of things happen in in the background when it comes to team planning so you know for example i'll take an example of the t20 world cup which was supposed to happen this year we we don't have an official confirmation yet on the tournament so i won't make a comment on whether that will happen or no but then you know in all possibility since wimbledon was cancelled since you know the tokyo olympics was cancelled yeah how do teams look at this scenario right so that's something very interesting because they would have had players in mind they would have had their preparation in mind in terms of what are they going to do the ipl which got cancelled apparently yeah. it yeah. was a breeding ground for this kind of a tournaments you know preparation right so it was yeah, where every every one was looking forward for ipl exactly. because that's the place <clears> where they pick up their players right so yep not just india but all the teams you know uh, so the teams. they want to see how the teams how the players perform in a t20 scenario 
Yeah. So again, so that's taken a big hit. So the team planning and composition now is, you know, completely tossed out, right? So we don't know what's going to happen, you know, in case the tournament is still going to happen in October. Yeah. So that's, that's a big factor. Leagues and global tournaments, that's a big, big financial, you know, you spoke about financial revenue loss. Yeah. Thankfully, you know, we know that Wimbledon had his insurance policy in place. And, you know, that's the, that's, that's kind of, uh, they were prepared for this kind of a day on the scenario. But then, you know, not all leagues and not all tournaments may have that comfort of having an insurance policy like it's that. Very interesting point. What is this insurance for Wimbledon? So, yes. So, yeah. So basically, uh, the Wimbledon, uh, you know, the management was kind of, they had a clause in their contract. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know the exact figure, but it was in some million pounds or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll probably figure that out. So it's a good thing. I need to check that amount. It, it is for yeah. the organizer or it is for player as well? Yes. Yeah, so for the entire organizing committee. So basically, for example, you know, if it's happening in England in that entire scenario, so whoever is concerned in that ecosystem, so they had an insurance policy in place in case the event gets cancelled due to any unforeseen circumstance. So mm-hmm. I think they were, you know, probably um, now, now actually they have become a trendsetter in this, uh, in this space, uh, if I could call so. Because, you know, now every tournament and every league might follow suit in terms of, you know, what happens if this gets cancelled or what happens if this is, you know, affected. So I think that's a good learning. Uh, probably, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously it, it won't cover all the losses, but at least it will limit the losses to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. So, yes. so yeah, so that's, that's there. Um, fans, I think that's the, that's the most important point. We all are fans, right? So I think I really feel for them too. Mm. Uh, because, you know, everybody as a fan was looking forward to a specific tournament or a specific mm. player performing, you know, in a specific series or, you know, or for any sport altogether, right? Mm. So I think that's where uh, being in a lockdown situation, we don't have live sport as well. So that's even hurting a fan. See, that's them. the problem because... We always wish that whenever we have to go to the office when there is IPL match going or World Cup yeah. matches going or football soccer game is going on, we always used to wish, oh my God, yeah. uh, we should not be in the office, right? But yeah. uh, little did we realize that in, in this kind of lockdown, everybody yeah. will be in lockdown. So, exactly. sports, nothing, nothing to enjoy. We are just uh, watching Netflix yeah. and uh, exactly. Matches, right? So it's not going guess, to Guess who's making money? Netflix, Amazon Prime, all the online streaming platforms, right? Yeah, so they, it's, it's like it's like a honeymoon period for them now. So, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so that's, the, yeah. So I think, yeah, the, the fans are obviously deprived of uh, live sport and, you know, proper entertainment, if I could say so. Yeah. The hardcore sports lovers. Yeah. Media and broadcast, there's absolutely nothing that they this could do. This is the biggest, stage. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I was reading somewhere uh, today in the morning itself that Cricket Australia, mm-hmm. they might be, uh, you know, facing heavy losses in case, uh, obviously, one is the World T20, if that, if that gets cancelled or postponed. And if the Indian tour of Australia down under, which was happening later this year, that was mm-hmm. a big, big series, right? So again, Steve Smith and David Warner back in action versus Virat Kohli, Bumrah. Yeah. You know, it was a classic mouth-watering contest. So, you know. If that doesn't happen, I think there was somewhere about two million dollars of something, you know, uh, the the revenue loss which was estimated. So, and we we are not still counting about the National Football League and uh, absolutely European leagues. Yep. Those are exactly. those are the big boys, right? So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, Bundesliga, you know, the uh, European Football League, all yeah. these leagues, you know, it's like. Yes. Huge, huge hit for them. And I believe, you know, there's, there's nothing that you can do as a broadcaster, as a league organizer. You have to just go with the flow right now. Yeah. The last one is quite interesting. Like I said, you know, uh, when I mentioned about sport, it's a complete ecosystem, right? So it's not just about the players or the league itself. It's also about hospitality and travel industry. Imagine the amount of cancellation of tickets for uh, yeah. flights, for hotels. Yeah. Yeah, you know everything associated with sport. Even the guys who are serving, uh, you know, food to the players in the hospitality boxes to commentators, everyone, you know. So it's it's complete revenue loss for all the uh, you everything know, is gone. Yeah, yeah, the concerned parties with sport. Yeah. So now we've seen who all are affected. Probably now when we move ahead in this presentation, I'll just show you, you know, uh, in terms of impact, what is the uh, revenue breakdown of these major five sports leagues, you know. Yeah, uh, if you look at the Premier League, uh, the NHL, the NBA, the NFL and MLB, uh, I didn't include IPL here because these were uh, the, uh, the figures that I got from a website specific to, you know, the five major leagues across the world. IPL, you, course, you have covered all the big boys, yeah. Yeah, so, so these are actually the big boys which have been popular across, uh, you know, ages and generations. All across the world, yeah. So again, uh, you know, 
the media rights value globally is about 50 billion you know but 60% of that is accounted by just these 10 sports leagues 10 sports uh, you know. yeah I agree. Yeah. So you know, so that's that's the kind of uh, you know fifty billion dollars. Cost we are talking about. about. Yeah, the cost that we are talking about, mm. and uh, you know, so that's that's the impact which is going to have overall in the year. But but the point is yeah. that uh, yeah. most of the broadcasting company or mm-hmm. a, a TV broadcasting company they they buy the rights for like five years, six years agreement, ten years yeah. agreement, right? So yep. they have already paid sixty percent or fifty percent of those money, right? So Correct. it is a huge. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. how they are going to cover it up. Maybe they are also insured. Yeah. I'm. I'm pretty yeah. much sure they must have some. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, for to that, I think. Uh, yeah. So my answer would be: I'm not a sports law expert, uh, honestly. So uh, I, I cannot comment upon the specific clauses in the contract. But from mm-hmm. what I could understand, with uh, you know speaking to a few colleagues in the sponsorship space, is that mm-hmm. there are these force majeure clauses in which uh, if these kind of unprecedented circumstances come up, so they have a way to kind of come out of that, uh, you know, uh, for the yeah. particular year or wave off that cost. So, but then again, it's a loss, you know, loss is a loss, right? So yeah. you cannot equate that with the event happening versus, you know, waving off that amount, right? So that's... And, that's, I, and I imagine even there is an insurance uh, covered it, imagine yeah. the kind of uh, the, the, the pressure is going to come on the insurance company. The, the, uh, the company, right? So Whether they are going to uh, sustain yeah. that is also exactly. a very big question, right? Yeah, yeah, because insurance in these kind of scenarios, that's the last thing on, you know, the company's mind that they will have to pay an insurance fee back uh, or, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of coverage back to a customer in this kind of a scenario, right? So generally insurance is related to a person or say a company uh, in a general day-to-day life scenario. But in sport, it's extremely rare that, you know, these kind of events get... Yeah, no, no one has planned for these kind of uh, pandemics. Absolutely. Yep, exactly. Uh, I think uh, if you see... Uh, what what is what has grown uh, not just uh, traditional satellite or cable television uh, subscription you know it's in fact it's kind of dipped now you know we are living in times of live streaming and that's something which has really come up over the last uh, few years as you know with the advent of uh, high speed internet all across the world mm-hmm. so i think watching sports by traditional television has fallen in the last 10 years okay. so okay. you know more and more people have different ways of kind of following sports, either on an app or, you know, or uh, on a live streaming video on YouTube, on Facebook, you know, so those are different mediums now. So I think so in terms of impact on television, that's something which is not as bad, if I could say so, as the other mediums. Hmm. Yes, media, uh, you know, in terms of broadcasting covers television as well. But then, you know, a lot of the broadcasters also, you know, broadcast live on their websites nowadays. Hmm. So hmm. That has completely kind of changed the dynamics of this industry. So, in fact, if you see now, uh, instead of the live sport, what, hmm. uh, you know, in the, in the slides which is coming further, I'll show you that how broadcasters are now leveraging on, you know, pre-recorded content or historical hmm. content and then dishing it out to subscribers or their fans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to keep them busy. For example, if you see the uh, International Cricket Council's uh, web page, you know, uh, if you see their uh, uh, Facebook page, you know, they're showing all kinds of World Cup classic games, you know, Mm -hmm. Indian-Pakistan matches, you know, uh, they had a complete series covering uh, World Cup 2015. So Mm -hmm. every day they are kind of, you know, showing the entire game ball by ball to kind of keep their fans engaged and trying to kind of somehow cover their traditional revenues uh, through sponsorship into a digital revenue model now. Mm-hmm. Wherein, you know, they can look at getting sponsors to get a digital, uh, you know, get on a digital footprint instead of just looking at the traditional way. No, that is that is fine. Um, in mm-hmm. normal circumstances, I will say, okay, that's a good idea to mm-hmm. uh, broaden your uh, platform. So mm-hmm. right from the TV, you go to your mobile yep. and uh, different uh, outlet uh, mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, reaching out to your fans but mm-hmm. in this uh, circumstances in the given circumstances where we are uh, mm-hmm. we are like as rahul gandhi said we are like into pause button right so everything is paused yep now, in this scenario how you think that this uh, reaching out to your fans will actually help uh, yep. we can we can sustain the interest for a couple of months three months but yep. slowly yep. people will start losing that interest right Agreed. Yeah. So I think so yeah. they, they want to see the real stuff, the real yeah, game. Yeah. So they, they, they cannot be a substitute for live sport, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. So you cannot have that. So that's why, you know, teams and leagues and, uh, you know, uh, all these guys are coming up with innovative ideas now to keep fans engaged. 
at some mm-hmm. level or the other. So when we when I speak about engagement, it's not necessarily meaning watching sport, but also mm-hmm. participating in different activities altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something, you know, which, uh, like I mentioned about Fanisco, the company that I work with, uh, yeah. you know, so they are into that kind of a solution model for sports team, not just because of COVID, but it was even before COVID, right? So it was like, for example, what do you do when the IPL is not happening? You know, mm-hmm. so it happens only in April and May every year. But how do you keep fans engaged for the rest of the year, right? Mm-hmm. So that's something wherein they come up with innovative contests and, you know, they come up with specific, uh, you know, uh, what, what can I call it? Uh, uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're playing a game, you know, you'll have a leaderboard score in terms of where you are versus your friends and stuff. So getting in that competitiveness amongst your own peers and, you know, rewarding fans by giving them something which is different, right? So I think that's, that's how the modern day fans... I'm just, uh, let me just present you a scenario, right? Because sure. uh, as far as, uh, you know, indoor is concerned, right? Mm-hmm. Sports is concerned. Mm-hmm. I think still they can, they can come back quickly, pretty fast. Like if you talk about, um, say, chess, mm-hmm. right? yeah, it's there a non-contact. Is more, sport. There is a more yep. possibility of engaging the fan yep. individually. Yep. yep. But the right. game, like where there is a participation, right? Like, yep. like twelve people are playing. Yep. yep. I think there should be some innovative idea. If we have to live like this for the rest of our life, there will be something <laughs> coming up. Uh, yep. Like maybe Devesh Shankar is teaming up with Virat Kohli and making up a team and. Playing yeah, something yeah. on a yeah yeah so fantasy leagues is a big part of fan yeah, engagement absolutely yeah. yeah you're right so and that's that's something which a lot of teams are doing now so they are coming up with fantasy t- teams fantasy leagues and that's mm-hmm. where you know fans get points for each and every uh, initiative that they take yeah and that's one way of motivating them and keeping them engaged uh, throughout mm-hmm. the year right even if there is no live sport yeah so you know and they might in fact uh, if you ask me nowadays there's something called as augmented reality and virtual reality which is becoming a huge hit amongst uh, you know the fan engagement circles so yeah. and that's something which uh, i've seen from close quarters so you know if it could be as simple as uh, if mr devesh is sitting here if he wins a contest right so he doesn't need to be necessarily in mumbai to get a selfie with virat kohli you know mm-hmm. so you can just have an app you know and just go there get your best uh, you know position in terms of how you want to stand with virat kohli and you know you could stand like this or you could stand like this and you know he'll be right next to you it will actually look that you were standing with him so these are or, some of or, the innovative ways and this is also a good opportunity for all the boards i will tell i'll say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that if virat was never idle like this uh, yep. virat is just an example because he is mm-hmm. one of the most famous guy Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be anybody else, right? Yep. It could be uh, other player from Pakistan or yep. England or Australia. Mm. Uh, they can actually give you a virtual training, right? So in the sense that absolutely, yeah, most, yeah, most of the youngster who are always looking forward to meet Virat Kohli and talk about their batting batting technique yep. rather than Virat Kohli's technique because it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's yep. doing bad. Yep. Everybody knows where he is, right? So yep. Yep. if Virat can give some tips or Sunil Gavaskar or say Kapil Dev yep. or somebody else, yep. otherwise yep. they're very busy people, right? So they don't get yep. time to engage with the yep. fan or yep. with the players exactly. at yep. the lower level. Now this is yep. a good opportunity for them to go virtually Absolutely. and start their own um, interaction with the fan. Yeah, in fact, uh, you'll be surprised that one of the teams actually did it. So I think there is a team called, uh, you know, Bengaluru FC uh, playing in the uh, Indian Super League football tournament. So uh, if I'm not wrong, I think their captain Sunil Chetri, who is a superstar in Indian football, yeah. he did a virtual interaction with fans. And I think that was a really good initiative to kind yeah. of connect with fans on a personal level. Uh, if you see the cricketers nowadays, uh, I'm sure you would have seen those vi- YouTube videos, you know, uh, the Instagram chats with Virat did with KP, uh, Kevin Peterson and, you know, with yeah, uh, Rohit Sharma did. So, so that's another thing which is becoming a huge hit, right? So, uh, th- so there are, I mean, innovative ways to kind of keep people engaged and also keep fans engaged in this kind of a scenario. Mm-hmm. So again, uh, if you look at specific sports, uh, you can see potential loss of gate revenue. Uh, NBA is about 450 million USD. Hmm. Uh, marketing rights for March Madness, it was about 867.5 million USD and, uh, you know, potential loss per school in, this, uh, in, a, in, in the March Madness event is about 17 million USD and Formula One, Olympics, other sports, you know, you can see the figures in front of you, right? So, hmm. so that's the kind of financial impact that we were looking at specifically individually for each sport. Mm. Again, the picture is not that rosy. It doesn't look that great. And, you know, you could imagine the amount of stress that these leagues and the sponsors might be going through at this point in time. Mm. 
So the, yeah, so now we have spoken about the impact, right? What has happened? Everybody knows now what has happened, but what are teams and leagues doing about it? I think that's the important question because, you know, I mean, yeah, everybody can state the problem, but what is the solution? You know, what do we look at? So again, a lot of these teams are using social media, are using online presence and are using their fan following, which is existing to kind of keep them engaged with various activities. So for example, you could see the Southampton uh, FC, you know, they, they they had had a player who could do, uh, you know, uh, a specific stay at home challenge. And uh, unfortunately you can't see the video here, but then he's actually showing off some footballing skills with the toilet paper roll. So so that's, that's yeah. 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 So that's, that's kind of, you know, living in the times wherein everybody is so gungo about toilet paper, right? So that's become a huge rage. Premier League, uh, you know, you're, uh, they're, they're engaging with fans in terms of, you know, questions, questions and answers. Mm. The Boston Red Sox is something which is very interesting. And that's something which will also keep kids interested, right? So they have completely come up with a Red Sox coloring page book for specific segments, you know, target market segments. Mm-hmm. Uh, NBA is, uh, you know, also showing some bit of esports, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of what it could have been, uh, you know, in the new season with, uh, with the tip off. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so they are showing that same match scenario in any sports format that, you know, if these two teams had played together, you know, what would have happened? So that's quite, kind of quite interesting. So it's like a virtual reality scenario. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I think, yeah, sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, this is very interesting. Uh, yeah. But I would like to add that, yeah, it's not about uh, raising the problems, always questioning mm-hmm. it. I think yeah. these are very innovative ideas which is coming up and because of circumstances yeah. Yeah. and the way we are, uh, the, the kind of thing we are into right so yeah but we have to understand this all mm-hmm. will can sustain only if there is a business moving correct and because yep. don't don't forget about one thing you can keep your fan engaged you can engage them you can mobilize your audience and everything yep. Yep. but if there is no sponsors yeah and they do not have money to invest yeah. Uh, ultimately, the basic has to come in, right? There should be a Agreed. manufacturing who is running. There should be a retailer yep. who is doing these retail yep. business. How yep. they are doing their business processes and the retail processes, mm. that is, mm. they can use technology. But the, some of the basic industry has to run if this world economy is Exactly. Exactly. Manufacturing exactly. has to go. Uh, your retail yep. has to go. Your farmer Agreed. has to go. And you cannot stop uh, manufacturing. You cannot stop uh, farming. For an example, right? So, correct, correct. So we have to understand these all is yep. Good. Yep. Yep. me. Yep. You can mobilize the people on the social media, but there has yep. to be somebody who can mm. put money that okay, I want yep. to sponsor this, right? Agreed. So I think you know to answer your question, I mean, there's there's no two ways about it. Absolutely right in terms of the industry has to function in its own, right? So otherwise there'll be no. Uh, no revenues, never, re, no revenues, right? So I think, but there's one interesting aspect which I'd like to build, uh, you know, bring forward uh, before COVID-19, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was speaking to a lot of teams about fan engagement mm-hmm. from a digital perspective, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of these guys were little averse to the idea, you know, because they didn't want to change. Everybody's averse to change, right? So they didn't want to kind of explore a new platform altogether to kind of bring digital fans on board because, you know, they didn't realize Mm. that a digital medium could be very powerful in terms of even getting sponsorships, right? Mm. So right now, obviously, the sponsorship scenario is slightly different because in this current scenario, like you said, you know, with no live sport, it will be completely different. But still, mm. if you ask me, a hardcore fan base of a team, mm. say, uh, for example, Manchester United, right? It might be having millions of worldwide fans, mm. right? So it still has those fans on that digital platform, right? Mm. So it still calls for millions of views and eyeballs looking at a Manchester United app or a web page or the social media handle, correct? So I think in that aspect, I'm just thinking a lot of these teams are actually going to start looking at digital fan engagement more seriously, but for two reasons. One is obviously it opens up a new channel for sponsorships, Hmm. even when the sport is not being played at the moment. Second mm. is when the sports is, sport is actually back in action, then you have mm. two mediums, which is a traditional medium plus the digital medium for engaging fans. Mm. So I think mm. that's one big change which I foresee in the industry, which will happen. It's yeah. not just about traditional models of, you know, having fans uh, on the ground and, you know, depending upon gate revenues by, you know, by ticketing and stuff. So mm. Now there are innovative ways of doing this because, you know, the, the biggest factor to consider now 
mm-hmm. is that when sports is back in action, how mm-hmm. many fans will actually turn up in stadiums? At least in the initial few months, right? There'll still be a bit yeah, of. Yeah, and I think it is a very good point because yep. in the initial stage, I talked, <laughs> I, I I talked about the mental scar it is going to create, right? The mental, exactly, the exactly. People negative yep. impacts and all, so people yep. will be very very worried about yep. uh, engaging yep. with other people right away. Exactly. Uh, once the lockdown is clear, but yep. it, it will be a slow progress, right? Exactly. Uh, yep. And the other aspect I just quickly want to ask because we are just running out of the time. Sure. Uh, did we speak about the merchandising and the scope of merchandising in this scenario? Uh, not yet. Uh, we haven't spoken about it. Uh, but then, yeah, merchandising, again, it's connected to manufacturing, right? Where it's being produced and, you know, how many people actually buy it. So I think everything has to now go online, even if they are being, if they are producing it at some level. Right. So, mm-hmm. so I think, again, that's another area where I feel, uh, you know, fans or sorry, the, the teams have to kind of look at an online medium at an e-commerce model for merchandising as well, because uh, whoever invested in having their own merchandising stores, you know, now it's completely gone for a toss. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they will have to look at different mediums. And that's where I think uh, these kind of contests that they run, you know, uh, with for fans, that's where they could look at more engagement. For example, you know, if you participate in a quiz, if you happen to win it today, you know, then the team will actually send you, send over a new uh, jersey for you, right? So those are the ways of engaging fans, getting yeah. more eyeballs. And that's when more eyeballs leads to more sponsors, yeah. right? So that's the kind of engagement model that we need to look at. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. In fact, you know, from a creating perspective, before we closed on, there's a very interesting debate happening now on social media, which I would like to ask your opinion as well. Yeah, go ahead. There is this, uh, you know, new thing about when test cricket is back in action, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. is there an apprehension for fast bowlers to use their sal- saliva to kind of shine the ball? You know, there's a big <laughs> article now on cricket yeah. for today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I will go one step, uh, you know, ahead and I will say, even they, you know, come to the stadium, there will yep. be a, a test going on yep. for COVID-19. So for yep. all players should be tested before they enter into the stadium as well as the yep. fans. So yes. Once they are clear, they can do whatever they want. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Putting, so, some, putting those stuff on the um, on the ball will be allowed, I guess. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be. So, but then again, it's, it's not going to happen. Right? Exactly, right. So, so that's something which is a very, very mm-hmm. interesting scenario on hand. So, I, I saw a lot of comments. People are saying some guys said, "Why not let them use Vaseline, right, or just sweat instead?" So, but then again, you know, how will it impact the game? The progress and the flow of the game it's something which we, we don't know yet yeah so, so yeah so there point. are many possibilities because even in this difficult uh, uh, time uh, we mm-hmm. do not know that what kind of genius mind is working and what kind of scenario they can present what kind Correct. of product they can bring forward in this because yep. only yep. genius mind can think we we are Absolutely. some we cannot think of those stuff right so yep. but there yep. must be some genius mind like bill gates and something who must yep. be thinking how to grab this opportunity and you know yep. convert into some uh, financial yep. gain or uh, uh, good for humanity right in fact you know uh, what uh, from a broadcasting perspective when you spoke about new technologies right so i think we have, we have already seen a lot of these broadcasters coming up with ai enabled cameras artificial, yeah artificial That's so perfect. so you might see a scenario wherein there will be no cameraman on the field itself yeah it is all ai cameras, robots exactly and you'll just have a production room Mm-hmm. And, you know, commentators need not go to the ground. They can mm-hmm. just be in their, uh, you know, production studio where it, where there's less crowd. And, mm-hmm. you know, from there they can produce and give a complete, uh, you know, match day experience. The in fact, I wrote, a, I wrote a blog on this that uh, mm-hmm. presenting the scenario that yep. now what I'm thinking is because of this setback, yep. uh, though people were in the industry were investing on the robot and everything, but I think the the kind of investment you will see here yep. on, onward yep. will be yep. huge because yep. now people have realized yep. what is the b- real benefit of AI and robot. Yeah, yeah, a virtual uh, scenario. Imagine yeah. is already uh, most of their warehouse is all uh, robot driven. Uh, yep. They're very, very minimum uh, yep. human interference. <clears throat> yep. But now you will see more investment, more companies are investing on this yep. area. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's good and bad as well because that will also lead to layoffs. That will also lead to job cuts. So, and you see, layoffs. I will not say it will 
so these are temporary so when the yeah the, when there is a layoffs there is always yeah. another way out yeah to get back and, into you know yeah, the, the, yeah. the people has to change keep changing their skill yeah, there could be a different kind of skill which will be required yeah agree yeah. and i totally agree there where there is a labor required um, mm. that cannot be replaced very yeah. fast correct you cannot have actual robot doing farming it is possible i'm not yeah. saying it's not possible yeah. but yeah there will be still people required yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. but there will be a minimum they will keep yeah. it for minimum that's what yeah. i am thinking and yeah exactly so it has to be head. it has to be a facilitator i mean I, I i keep telling people this you know technology can never replace humans it can only facilitate yeah. for a better or you know an easy environment to kind of get the better output yeah so yeah so that's something which is yeah i think with this uh, i just want to summarize that thanks a lot venu for your wonderful presentation uh, no problem sir very good points my pleasure and uh, this program we just did it to and this is just a start i yep. promise we uh, i will keep bothering you venu uh, for many other topics uh, yep. related to branding and those because <laughs> my favorite topic how cricket canada can benefit with yep. some yep. smart thinking um, yep absolutely so we'll discuss about it in later ep- episode That's but i would like to summarize to. this one thing that uh nothing is bigger than life right so uh, absolutely yep most important thing is stay home uh, be yep. patient uh, yep. sooner we'll we'll see that things will start getting better and better uh, yep. sports is not bigger than life life is bigger yep. but it is yep. all about we to gauge where we are and uh, when we come out what what kind of situation we should be ready for so this is just that thing right so but wish you wish everyone a very healthy life stay yep. safe stay home and when you next next time when we will do program we'll do on canada and we'll absolutely summarize and we'll try to see uh, how canada can do much better yep. what they are doing right now <laughs> okay yep, absolutely so cricket is something which you can always discuss for hours and hours together <laughs> and thanks a lot and no uh, problem my yeah, pleasure sir. see you next time with a different topic yeah yeah this might be out taken comfortably that's a good catch in the deep what run needed this might run away to the boundary